Good morning and welcome back to Dr. Logic, Awkwardly Does Logic in her office. Having now seen a bunch of the rules, how to apply axioms, what the definition of proof is, I want to put all of these aspects together and actually show you how to prove certain valid syllogisms. So this is a video of examples. I'm going to give you two examples and work through the proofs, and then I'm going to leave you with a challenge of a third one to try to prove yourself. Now, if you aren't able to get it, having just seen two examples and the definitions of the rules, that's okay. In a couple videos time, I'm going to walk you through a foolproof method that will guarantee that you can prove every single valid syllogism that you want to prove. So if you can't get it on your own, wait a couple videos and I'll give you a bit of assistance. But let's bring up our whiteboard so that we've got some uh, space to work. I just want to, first of all, remind you of the rules that we've got. So we've got four types, sorry, three types of rules. I haven't given you the fourth yet. There are the bookkeeping rules, which are premise and reiteration. There are the transformation rules, which are accidental conversion and simple conversion. And then we have the rules about applying axioms. And we have four axioms, Barbara, Taylor, and Dari, and Ferio. Now, there are two syllogisms that I want to look at, that I want to give you proofs for. The first is the mood called Dorothy. And it is, as, as a major premise, P-A-M, minor premise, S-A-M, and the conclusion is P-I-S. So what you can see from the fact that in both of the premises, the middle term is the subject, this is a third figure syllogism. The other one that I want to prove for you is the mood chemestris, which has as a major premise, M-A-P, minor premise, M-E-S, and conclusion, P-E-S. So what you can see here, the middle term is the predicate of both of the premises. So this one is a second figure syllogism. Now, as I said before, every single syllogistic proof starts by writing down your premises, the major premise and the minor premise in that order. So even if you don't even know where to begin, you do know where to begin. You always begin by drawing your scope line and then line one is your major premise P-A-M, line two is your minor premise, S-A-M, and both of these are annotated with the annotation premise. And then we just put this little line underneath to say, okay, these are our premises. Everything that comes below are things we are going to derive from the premise. So what we want to derive in the case of Dorothy is the categorical proposition P-I-S. So we need some way of getting a proposition that has both P and S in it, and it has to have the I copula. The first step that I'm going to do is, and this is just kind of for bookkeeping purposes. This is why it's called the bookkeeping rule. I'm gonna reiterate the first premise so that we have it here. You might ask, why are you doing that? Well, I'm doing it because ultimately I need to have my premises in the right order in order to be able to apply an axiom. Now you might ask, how do you know that you need to do this? Well, it's because I've proven Dorothy many times before. I'll give you, as I said, in a couple videos time, hints and tricks that will allow you to identify what moves to make when, and then you'll be able to see why I knew that I needed to first reiterate this premise before I can move on. But the next thing that I'm going to do is actually apply one of the transformation rules. So we have two universal affirmative claims. These can both be accidentally converted. I'm not gonna accidentally convert the thir uh, line three. If I had wanted to do that, then instead of reiterating line one, I could have just accidentally converted it. Instead, I'm going to do accidental conversion on line two. Now, if you remember, accidental conversion is when you swap the order of the subject and predicate terms, and then you change from a universal copula to the corresponding partial one. So we start off with S-A-M. If I swap the order of the premises, I then have M and S, and then I change this A copula to the corresponding partial copula, so I get I. So line four is M-I-S, and this is accidental conversion of line two. 
Now, I have something where we have a, let me get some highlight here. We've got a predicate here, a subject here, and then the middle term forming a diagonal in between. And if you remember the structure of the various figures, this is the first figure. And in particular, this is the two premises of one of our axioms. In fact, the axiom Darii, which has an A claim as the major premise, an I claim as the minor premise, and from it, we can derive another I claim. So just to show what we've got here, like a new color, you take the predicate from the major premise and the subject from the minor premise, and then Dari says that if you have an A claim and an I claim arranged in the first figure, you can derive from that an I claim. So this is a result of applying the premise Dari to lines three and four. And what do you know, PIS right here is exactly what we wanted to try to prove. So from the assumption of PAM and SAM, using the rules of transformation, the bookkeeping rules and the axioms, I was able to derive the conclusion PIS, which is exactly what we wanted. Hooray! Can we do it again with Comestris? So, exactly the same setup. We know that we start off our proof by writing down the two premises. So there's our scope line, line one, major premise, MAP, line two, minor premise, MES, and both of these get annotated with the rule premise and our little line underneath to set them off. Now, we need to get an E claim for our conclusion with P as the subject and S as the predicate. This is what we have, it, uh, this is what the schematic that I wrote up gets us. The first thing that I'm going to do is try to rearrange terms so that I get something, again, it, two pairs of propositions that are in the first figure. So first, I'm going to do simple conversion on this E claim. So simple conversion just is swap the order of the terms, don't do anything else. So simple conversion on line two gets us S E M. Now, I'm going to take the top premise, number the major premise, and move it down so that it's below what I've just derived. So here we get M A P. And this is just reiteration of line one. Why do I want to do that? It's because then I have something where we've got the middle terms in the diagonal, and then we have a predicate term and a subject term. Now, don't be confused that in this particular pairing, our subject term is P and our predicate term is S because subject and predicate don't have to do with what the letters are, but with the grammatical position in the sentence. So the term on the left of the copula is always the predicate. The term on the right is always the subject. So it just happens that in the pair three and four, our predicate term happens to be S. But the important thing is we now have something that looks like a first figure syllogism, and it has an E claim in the uh, major premise, an A claim in the minor premise, and this sets us up to be able to apply the axiom Taylorent. So Taylorent says, if you have something in the first figure with an E major and an A minor, then I can take the predicate of the major and the subject of the minor and conclude that with an E uh, copula. So this is an application of the axiom Taylorent to lines three and four. So this gets us the conclusion in SEP. This is uh, not quite what we want. What we want is PES. So we're very close. We've got the right copula. We've got the right terms. They're just in the wrong order. But hurrah, we can actually apply simple conversion to an E claim, which means line six, we swap the order of the terms to get PES. This is simple conversion, line five, and there we go. PES is exactly what we wanted to try to prove 
we did it. So here's two examples for you. And then I promised that I would give you one that you can try yourself. So that is the going to set you as homework, the syllogism phalapton. This is also a third figure syllogism. So we know that it has the form P blank M, S blank M, conclusion P blank S. And then the copulae that we have are E, A, and O. So major premise P, E, M, minor premise S, A, M, conclusion that you want to try to derive P, O, S. Can you do it with the bookkeeping rules, the transformation rules, and applying the axioms? Give it a go. If you think you've got an answer, stick it in the comments. I'll happily take a look at it. And if you can't give it, a, if you can't figure it out, don't worry. Come back in a couple of videos times and I will give you the foolproof method for proving every single valid syllogism you could ever want to prove. Next though, we are actually going to kind of set the examples aside and turn to the last set of rules or rather the last method that we have for proving syllogisms and that's the hypothetical method. So join me next time. See you then. Cheers.